The following information is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. The views expressed do not reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result. Whether you're male or female, it all starts in high school. All of a sudden you discover these things called hormones and then hormones are with you for the rest of your life. Or are they? You kind of get my age and you start to wonder where the hormones went. Well, can you replace them? Is it safe to do so? I mean, are there different kinds? Are there safer ones? Are there more dangerous ones? Well, our guest today, pharmacist Billy Weiss, is gonna give you a health awakening. Welcome to The Health Awakening. I'm your host, Scott Laird. We are first introduced to hormones in high school, and then they stay with us for the rest of our lives, but do they really? At a certain point, we start feeling kind of slow, kind of like we didn't, you know, like, not like we used to. So what do we do at that point? Do we replace the hormones? Is that natural? Should we be doing that? Is there a difference? We have someone here today who can answer all of those questions. Please welcome our guest today, pharmacist Billy Weiss. Welcome, Billy. Hey, Scott. Thank you for having me. You are a favorite on this show. I mean, you are, <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you are you. a regular. I think you've been here more than anybody, but uh, you know, our, our kids went to gymnastics together and right. you know, we've known each other a long sure. time. And you've taught me a lot, so thank you for that, by yeah, the way. Same here. And, and one of the things you have taught me recently uh, and had me start doing is hormone replacement therapy. Now, I think we need to like say, what exactly is that? I mean, how would I know I need hormone replacement therapy? Well, Scott, let's first make sure we, we uh, identify it as bio-identical hormone replacement therapy versus just hormone replacement therapy, and we can talk about some of the reasons why. The main ways that people would know is just that as we start to age, things start to go downhill in a lot of cases, right? Mm -hmm. So with men, you'll see things like they kind of lose their, their vigor and their drive, and they may start seeing that they can't maintain their muscle, they're losing strength, mm. uh, belly fat, uh, those kind of things, you know, just fatigue, tired. Uh, we see a lot of that with men. Then with women, um, we'll see things like hot flashes, of course, uh, is a very common thing that we see as the hormones decline. Um, they'll have these irregular cycles where they're bleeding different than they ever have before. Um, and again, they can lose bone, they, which you don't so much feel, but they can lose muscle, they can start gaining fat, especially around the middle, that's hard to, hard to take care of. They can have more depression, anxiety. So there's a whole slew of, of um, symptoms that can happen when our hormones are out of balance. Okay, now I wanna ask you about something in a second here about the difference, but first I wanna go back mm -hmm. to these uh, symptoms because most people would say, oh, come on, Billy, that's just, that's just menopause for women and that's andropause for guys. Mm -hmm. It just happens, just roll with it. That's the way nature works. What would you say to well, we'd say that nature has changed, Scott, unfortunately. With all the things that our bodies are bombarded with today, um, you know, the atrazine, the glyphosate, the forever plastics that are out there, all the chemicals that are now, there's over 10,000 chemicals approved for food, or, or I shouldn't even call it food. There's over 10,000 <laughs> chemicals that the food companies put in these products that are sold as food. Mm. Um, so our bodies are much different um, bombarded by all these things than they were for our grandparents or even our kids are gonna be completely different um, hormone levels than us. And we see that as hormone levels have dropped year after year for men and women. And so it happens earlier and earlier for most people now. So it's just harder to overcome all the things that we're, our environment puts us in today. And people might hear the buzzwords endocrine disruptors, correct. stuff like that, right? And, and right. endocrine system is what runs your hormones and that's where that all comes from. That's so, correct. So the atrazine, this is the, the, the infamous chemical that's in water that they showed changed the sex of frogs. Frogs and fish, I frogs believe, fish. went from male to female because atrazine is a very strong endocrine disrupting <laughs> chemical that um, actually produces a lot of estrogen. Right, and, and that's in our water? That's well, in it's our, in our food, it's, it's in, in our, our water. Okay. We're, we're actually, this product, atrazine, is banned in almost every other country. 
and we're actually buying this product from like Russia and Germany mm. where it's banned and we're spraying it everywhere and it's in the water, it's in the soil, so it's in the food. What is it used for? Do you know what it's used for? Yeah, it's a, it's a pesticide, an herbicide. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very now, similar to glyphosate. Glyphosate, there you go. There's the herbicide, glyphosate, Roundup, right. which, right. yeah, I, I'm very familiar with GMO right. foods. I wrote a little booklet you on sure it and did. all that. And like, yep. I mean, that's, that, and those things can self-replicate in your gut too, but that, that's a whole other show. Right. But, so getting back to what these things do to your hormones. Now you said that there's a difference here between hormone replacement and bio identical. People might hear yeah. it and go, wait, wait a minute, I've, what's the difference? What is that? Well, Scott, there's a lot of confusion um, about hormones. And you'll hear things like, oh, well, hormones can cause a heart attack. Hormones can cause cancer. The problem is, Scott, none of those studies were ever on bioidentical hormones. They were on synthetic, mm. uh, man-made, pharmaceutical company-made hormones, such as uh, Primrin, which is pregnant horse urine, that they were given to women. And yes, their heart attack rates went up their blood clot rates went up, their stroke mm. rates went up, their cancer rates went up. But that's not what a woman's body would ever make is horse urine, right? right. Hormones. So when we talk about estradiol, the estrogen that women do make most prominently, there are no studies that show that it creates any of these things. Mm. So we need to specify bioidentical what your and I bodies would make, what a woman's body would make versus what a would be made in a lab somewhere. Right, so Jody, my wife, got a call from mm -hmm. uh, someone we deal with, a client of ours, and she says, well, I don't wanna touch hormones because a friend of mine, quote, went on estrogen and got cancer. Right. So that's not bioidentical. We're talking about probably the pregnant horse urine that caused that problem. Well, we're, we're, Scott, there's a couple of issues there. We don't know exactly what they mean when they say estrogen, right? Which right. is why I want to be very specific. Bioidentical compounded micronized estradiol is the only hormone estrogen-wise that we talk about using for people. For and ladies. that's not what causes that. And that is not what causes cancer. It's actually protective against cancers. Wow. Uh, it's protective against Alzheimer's. It's protective against heart disease, mm. bone loss. So. It's completely different. The other issue with that, Scott, is a woman should never be put on any estrogen, quote, or estradiol even, the bioidentical one, without adequate progesterone because that's the way God designed the body to work. The okay. body works in unison in a woman's body with estrogen and progesterone. Now, again, bioidentical progesterone because the drug companies have products out there that are anti-progesterone Oh. that they say are progesterone, well, and that's what they teach the doctors. Well, hold that thought. We're gonna okay. get into that in our next segment. Okay, so this is interesting stuff. There is a difference here, and you need to know the difference. So we're going to come back and talk more about this with our guest, pharmacist Billy Weiss. Stay tuned to The Health Awakening. And welcome back to The Health Awakening. Well, we left you with a cliffhanger. <laughs> there are different types of hormones here, and some can actually drop the levels of certain hormones in the body, Billy? Let's review that. What were you saying there again? Well, I said that the drug companies have taught the medical providers that a, a product that is actually anti-progesterone, and they will tell them that it's progesterone. And they're taught, and pharmacists are taught, that it's progesterone. Hmm. So the problem is that it actually blocks the progesterone receptors. So what happens is it can create more of a progesterone deficiency and progesterone is very anti-cancer, anti-heart attack, anti-Alzheimer's, anti-bone loss. And so we're given a drug along with pregnant horse urine, if you look at the Women's Health Initiative, the WHI study. Mm -hmm. And so they were given these, these horse estrogens and they were given this anti-progesterone. And of course, heart attack rates and stroke rates and cancer rates went up. But again, when we look at true bioidentical hormone studies for men and women, what you can conclude is that every marker of health improves. Hmm. So there's zero danger when it's done properly. And when you follow the, the cycle that God intended and you follow the patterns and you follow the real studies that were done on bioidentical hormones, you'll find that people feel better, look better, perform better, have less disease, less heart attacks, less strokes, less blood clots, less cancers. Mm. And so it's, it's really, Scott, it's really sad that the media and the medical community have kind of 
taken that WHI study, which didn't use any bioidentical hormones at all, hmm. and said, here's what hormones cause when synthetic hormones do cause that. So it's like an oversimplification. Like I was mentioning when the cameras were off, something we encountered many years ago when I was working with the Hallelujah Diet, mm -hmm. and there was this disagreement between studies. Some said that uh, soy promoted breast cancer, and other studies said no, soy uh, causes breast cancer. Right. But it was the fact that they didn't realize they were looking at two different receptors at the time. Right. And so again, blanket studies, again, ones that say, oh, vitamin D doesn't do anything for bones. Well, they didn't include magnesium, they didn't right. include vitamin K2, right. which you need for vitamin D3 to work, so right. of course it doesn't work on its own. So when we see these studies, I guess you really need to know what we're looking at, and it's, it's hard for people to do that. It is, Scott, and that's why, I mean, you know, why I go through so much additional training outside of pharmacy school is to go and see what the studies really say and to go to the experts that have read through and combed through all the studies and have been using these bioidentical hormones for decades and decades for, for men and women and looking at what the results are. And just in the past 30 plus years, uh, the results that we've seen have been just quite phenomenal. I mean, when you think about this one statistic for women, uh, women before menopause, one in 36 or 37, if you look at different studies, will have die from a heart disease, heart attack. Mm. After menopause, it's one in two. Ooh. Now what changes? Their testosterone drops, their progesterone drops, their estradiol drops, their DHEA drops. Now there's not mm. a lot of other changes outside of that, right? And so people can say, yeah, well, that's just natural. Well, do I want to be at risk of one in 37 having a heart attack as a woman? Or do I want to be at risk of one in two? So you have to make a choice, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to decide. You know, my big mantra and my big tagline is be the CEO of your own health. I think to be a good CEO, you need to be maximize and optimize on your, your hormones. Now, I have done some of this myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to you and, and we did some testing and I said, okay, uh, what are the levels? Now, first of all, let's investigate that. Yeah. Because most people will go and get a blood test uh, on hormones and, and you can do that with you and I. If right. people want to do sure. that with you and I, there's information on the bottom of the screen right now where people can do that. Uh, they'll do a, you no, know, they can get it through us and then when they do the consult, they'll do it with you and, and I'll take notes in the background for them right. because you're gonna be telling them a lot of stuff. So I'll, I'll do that for them. So we can do that together. But um, when they look at a blood test, they might say, well, why do I need a consult? Everything's showing normal here. Tell us why normal ain't normal. <laughs> well, Scott, for one thing, normal is based off the average American. And over 70% of Americans are obese or overweight, uh, you know, over, Six to seven hundred thousand are dying from heart attacks. Over six to seven hundred thousand a year are dying from cancer. Uh, diabetes is through the roof. Insulin resistance is through the roof. Alzheimer's coming earlier and earlier. So, I think we never want to be normal. We never want to be average. On top of that, for testosterone levels for men, they have lowered the levels dramatically from what used to be considered normal to now what is considered normal. Uh, is almost half, is about half of what it used to be. Well, so what did normal used to be? Well, a man's testosterone total, total testosterone used to go up to 1,593 okay. on almost, well, it was universal on the labs. Now labs go from 750 to like 964. Because as being every, high end. Because everybody's coming down together. Because now everybody's that's coming down because of glyphosate, atrazine, ah. plastics, EMFs, I didn't bring up, but you did. Uh, I mean, we have all these factors. So do we want to be in the normal range for 20 or 30 years ago, or do we want to be in the normal range for now? Because look at health where it's come in America exactly. versus 20 or 30 years well, ago. Let's continue that in a second. All right, so first from Billy Weiss, don't be normal. Okay, that's the first thing we gotta <laughs> learn. And secondly, there's a difference between free and total testosterone. Maybe you didn't know that. We're gonna get into that next and why that matters. So stay with us on The Health Awakening. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. Before the break, you heard us talking about testosterone, and Billy, there's free and total testosterone. Uh, we did a test with me. Uh, you told me that mine was very low. Mine was around 600, and I thought I was doing okay because the normal told me I was okay. 
you would be on the upper half of what is considered normal today. Right. But 30 years ago, you would have been considered on the lower right. half, right? Right, now we talked about to total testosterone, but that's not the one that's really the crux of the matter, and I didn't know this until you taught me it. So what marker should we be looking for when it comes to testosterone? Well, we'd like to see the total, Scott, just so we have that number, but the number we really are most concerned with is free testosterone, F-R-E-E -E, testosterone, because that free means that it's available for the tissues, it's available for the muscles, it's available for the heart. And the reason that's so important is some of the testosterone in our body and some of all the hormones in our body are bound to sex hormone binding globulin and they're not readily available to be used. So what's most important when we look at testosterone is free testosterone because women and men both have more testosterone receptors in the heart than any other, any other place in the body. So knowing what is free and available not only to the heart but to the muscles throughout our body is the most critical number to know. And when we can optimize that number for men and women, every marker of health improves, whether it's mm. cholesterol, fat uh, around the middle, visceral fat, which is the most dangerous fat, of course, liver fat, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, just every marker of health, their mood, it, testosterone is a dopamine producer in the brain. So there are studies showing that testosterone is more effective than any antidepressant on the market hmm. uh, because it increases dopamine in the brain. So a lot of times, depression, anxiety, we didn't talk so much about those as symptoms, I should have, uh, is just low testosterone, both huh. sexes. Now, what is a good number for men and what's a good number for women in the free testosterone? Well, for men, now this will not be on any test as considered good. Again, it will mine, be considered mine was 11 above and was good. considered good. Right, we want 35 to 60 wow. for men. Okay. And for women, we're usually shooting for a free of 10. So okay. think about that, Scott. Your free was 11, and they say it's good. We're really trying to get women very close, if not there. Mm. Uh, and again, we just see amazing, amazing results. Now, it's not that, you know, and mine, by the way, went, went from 11 to 19 right. when I started doing the, uh, the bioidentical. Uh, testosterone that you right. provide in a cream. Right. So mine went from 11 to 19 in just a couple of months. Right. Uh, my son, who uh, is 20 years old, he also tested low. So you don't have to be 50 well, it to is, experience it's, this. It's, it's very young in men and women today, Scott, that we see their hormones out of balance. Wow. Yeah. So now speaking of that, so young women, uh, I encounter a lot of clients that I come across, younger women, not, not menopause, so we're not even thinking about hormones, because right. they're, they're not there. Right. Uh, they may be thinking about hormones because they're trying to get pregnant and they can't, so we'll touch that in a second. But polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, yeah. I always knew that as a sugar issue. Is it or isn't it? Well, it is insulin resistance, Scott, and it's also low progesterone. So these women, uh, they, they have this insulin resistance that goes undiagnosed because nobody will check their insulin. And so they have this low progesterone level, which causes them to excessively bleed. And it makes them, you know, very hard to, to get pregnant, to have a baby. And it's becoming more and more prominent. I think it's one in four women of childbearing age today have PCOS. And that is because, again, all the food and the chemicals and the, and the we just, they have the insulin resistance from the way they're eating. Mm. Uh, and for lack of the right nutrients through the right supplements. So uh, PCOS, despite what they're told, can absolutely be corrected. Their body can correct it, but now they're gonna have to take some actions, right? They're gonna have to get off all the sugar-forming or insulin-forming foods. They're gonna have to take the right nutritional supplements, and they're gonna have to get some bioidentical progesterone. And that will, in 99% of the cases, take care of the problem. We do it all. That's one of the most wow. common consultations that I do. Wow. Is young women who are having trouble getting pregnant or having irregular, you know, cycles. And, and so it's very common that we do this today. Now, getting back to testosterone for a second, there are certain things in the body we mentioned already that mag or, uh, vitamin D in one study didn't work because it didn't have adequate magnesium and vitamin K to make it work right. because you need all three pieces of that right. machine. So with testosterone, uh, is there another 
hormone that helps create more testosterone. Well, DHEA is a precursor to testosterone, certainly. So having adequate DHEA is not only good to help have higher levels of testosterone for both men and women, but DHEA is also very protective. It's kind of the, quote, anti-aging hormone. Okay. So good for bone building, muscle building, and more testosterone, more brain function, you know, all those well-being things that we think about when we think of quality of life. Okay, well good, we're gonna find out how to get tested next because that's where you okay. gotta start. You can't just go guessing this kind of stuff. Right. So, all right, so we're gonna find out in a second from pharmacist Billy Weiss who joins us on The Health Awakening about where to get tested for hormones and which ones to get tested. Uh, and then of course, you already know what is considered normal, what isn't, and you need somebody, i.e. Billy, to read it for you. So <laughs> we'll get into how to do all that in just a second on The Health Awakening. Welcome back to The Health Awakening. Okay, without further ado, how do you test for hormones? So Billy, uh, you and I work together on this. Mm -hmm. uh, people can get the test uh, through us. We have uh, medical doctors who sign off on the test. They can get this test done in any state, right? They can get the test done in any state. Yes. They can do the consult with you. Uh, we do this by Zoom. If they live in North Carolina, um, they need to find somebody. Now there's three, bioidentical, compounding, and micronized? Micronized, okay. right. And that's something you do, right? Correct. We, okay. you know, we have a compounding pharmacy here in North Carolina. If they don't live in North Carolina, we'll help them find a quality compounding pharmacy in their state that okay. can take care of their needs yeah, there. Billy, thank you for joining us. Today. Thank you, Scott. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yes, sir. All right. There's the information on the bottom of your screen. Get in touch with me. I'll get in touch with Billy. We can do this together. You want somebody who's on your side with this kind of thing, who knows what they're doing and knows what they're looking at. So before you go testing with hormones, look at the information on your screen and start there, okay? We'll see you next time on The Health Awakening. Thank you for joining us today on The Health Awakening. You can catch the replay of this episode and see our complete show archive at healthawakening.tv. For more information about our guests today and all they have to offer, please visit their website on the bottom of your screen. And please remember, the information you saw today is intended for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice, nor do the views expressed reflect those of this broadcaster. Should you choose to implement this information, please do so only with the assistance of a licensed medical professional. Neither the presenter nor this broadcaster assume any responsibility for any adverse effects or consequences that may result.